Welcome to video number four. Video number four, we're going to chat about exactly what we can add to the tree values. <clears throat> now, there's a couple, and if you right click and you say add, you've got a couple there, right? And we need to chat about that. Uh, if we don't understand this, then, you know, then there's no way <laughs> of continuing, right? So, um, basically, if we look at adding certain elements, it's called elements of a certain test plan, elements that you can add to the tree. Now, the test plan object has a checkbox called function testing. Now, if selected, it will um, cause JMeter to record the data returned from the server for each sample. Now, if you select a file in your test listeners, this data will be written to the file. Now, this can be useful if you are doing small time run projects um, to ensure that JMeter is configured correctly and that your server is returning the expected results. Now, the uh, consequence of this is that the file will grow huge and quite quickly and JMeter performance will suffer. Now, this option should be off if you are doing stress testing. Um, it is off by default. So if you are not recording the data file, this option um, may not be like a difference. Now, you can also use the configuration button in the listener to decide what fields to save. Okay, so if we go to edit and um, then we basically uh, have a look at this options right here. Uh, if we go to file, we can see the options there. Uh, when I say options, I mean uh, the, the stuff that you can choose from to work with. So um, now when we go to the, to the options section, uh, you can have a couple of things here. You can have the function helper dialog box and the function uh, helper just uh, is just uh, a helping section that, will, that you can add uh, certain elements uh, to um, the the function to actually help you and, and it will generate it. So if we go back to options and uh, you can actually toggle um, toolbar or not toolbar and uh, you can actually have a look at uh, you know the uh, log viewer as well. So you also have SSL manager. You can choose your different language that you want this to be uh, to be uh, uh, worked on. Um, and now I need to try and get it back to English going to be quite, ah, there we go. So in French, it's called different. <laughs> so um, that's basically, uh, you also have the look and feel, so you can even take it to Windows Classic if you would like, or you can uh, put it to Metal or uh, Windows or whatever you would like it to be. So I'm just going to leave it at Windows. So um, the next thing is uh, thread group. Now, thread group elements are the beginning points. Okay, so I'm just going to hover it over uh, thread group and I'm going to click on it. And um, it's the beginning points of any test plan. All controllers and samples must be under the thread group. So other elements, for example, um, listeners may be placed directly under the test plan, in which case they will apply to all the thread groups. As the name implies, the thread group element controls the number of threads JMeter will be using to execute the actual test. Now, the controls for the thread group allows you to either set the number of threads right here. Okay, so it's by default it is set to one. Um, set the ramp up period in seconds, as well as set up the number of times to execute the test, which is... Uh, right here. So it is a loop count. You can either say forever or you can set the times that it needs to be set, right? So that is a thread group. Now on each thread will execute the test plan in an enti um, entirely and completely independently of a test thread. Now multiple threads are used to simulate concurrent connections to your server application. Now the, re the ramp up period um, which is the one right here, uh, kind of explains to you, uh, or it kind of tells JMeter how long um, it will take to ramp up to a full number of threads chosen. Now, if you've chosen 10, like uh, we've done right there, um, and you use the uh, periods of, now remember this is in seconds, so 100 seconds, um, then JMeter will take 10, 100 seconds um, to get all the 10 threads up and running. Now, each thread will start 10, 
100 by 10 seconds after the previous thread. So we'll take 10, 100 seconds and we'll add uh, 10. It took 100 seconds and we'll add 10, right? So after the previous thread will begin. If there are 30 threads, the ramp up of the period will be 120 seconds. Then each successive thread will be delayed by 4 seconds. Now a ramp up, um, the ramp up needs to be a long enough to avoid too large a uh, too large workloads at the start of the test now it's short enough that the last thread start running before the first ones finish unless one wants to uh, you know happen to the other one so uh, now start with ramp up equals the number of threads and adjust up or down as needed now by default the thread group is configured to loop once through its element okay now, version 1.9 introduced the uh, test run scheduler. Now, click. Uh, so when we click on um, on the uh, checkbox uh, at the bottom of the uh, thread group panel to reveal extra fields. Uh, so if you click here, you can have schedule, and you can actually uh, see the uh, different. Uh, you know, schedule uh, scheduler, uh, and you can actually. Uh, uh, ch -ch -ch group panel to reveal it can uh, show you extra stuff like the start time or the end time and the duration. Now, Jamie, Jamie will wait if necessary until the start time has been reached at the end of each cycle. Now, Jamie to checks if the end time has been reached, and if so, uh, the run is then actually stopped. Now, otherwise, the test is allowed to continue until the alteration limit is reached. Now, alternatively, once can once we can use the rel relative delay as duration fields, um, which is quite important, and note uh, one thing to understand is that uh, the delay overrides start time, and the duration overrides the um, the end time. Okay, so that was um, talking about uh, thread groups. Uh, the next video, we're going to chat about controllers. This was video number four.